God's Story, Peter Preaches. So remember how part of God's story is about a guy named Peter who followed Jesus even though he messed up sometimes? Well, it goes like this. After Jesus died to rescue us, he came back to life. Forty days later, he rose into the sky, right up to heaven. Right before he left, he told his disciples, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you power. Then you will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and everywhere in the world. After that, Peter and the others weren't sure what to do, so they waited together in Jerusalem. While they waited, a sound like wind came from heaven. They saw flames that looked like tongues land on their heads. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Other people who followed Jesus were waiting in Jerusalem too. And when they heard the sound, they all crowded together, even though they spoke lots of different languages and couldn't talk to each other. But the Holy Spirit gave Peter and the disciples power. Now they could show people how to follow Jesus. See, the Holy Spirit helps us do things we can't do by ourselves. That day, the disciples spoke, and everybody understood them. That's like if someone said something in Latin or Swahili, and we understood it. Seems impossible, but that's what happened. So Peter stood up and told everybody how the Holy Spirit had come, and that we can all follow Jesus. He said, Turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. By the way, that means that when we believe in Jesus, we get the gift of the Holy Spirit too. Anyway, Peter told huge crowds of people about Jesus that day, and more than 3,000 people chose to follow him. Jesus had given Peter a job, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, Peter would do that job for the rest of his life. And that's part of the story of Peter. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jesus died. He came back to life. He rose up to heaven. His followers had a job. They waited for the Holy Spirit. The Spirit came. Peter spoke. Everyone understood. People believed in Jesus. They got the Holy Spirit too. And that's a part of God's story. Hello and welcome to Sunday morning service. We want to say thank you, God, for giving us this beautiful day to worship together. Uh, today we're going to go through the book of Acts, and uh, we're going to be in book of Acts chapter 2. So I'll read it now. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. It says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seems to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Amen. Let us pray before we begin. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that we can worship you. It is because of your Holy Spirit that allow us to worship you. For you desire and seek those who will worship you in spirit and in truth. May we truly give you our heart as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, we are in chapter 2 of Acts, and you might be wondering, why are we in chapter 2? Well, because for, for a whole month, we've been talking about book of Acts. We started with Acts chapter 4, where Peter boldly speak to Sanhedrin's and, and proclaim the gospel. There's no other name given under heaven by which man could be saved, only in the name of Jesus. He began to preach boldly, and that was Acts chapter 4. And we talked about Acts chapter 8, where we talked about Philip, who goes to the desert road to meet a man, Ethiopian eunuch, and he shared the gospel, he shared about Jesus, and he becomes a believer and gets baptized. And then we talked about chapter 10, where we talked about Peter, who goes to the Gentiles' house, Cornelius' house, and, and, and shared the gospel, and same spirit that fell upon the Jews also fell upon those who were Gentiles. 
and, and they become Christian. And then we talked about last week, chapter 11, where Barnabas goes to Antioch because the church was formed in, that, in the foreign land. The first church was formed, that this church was a Gentile church that was formed in Antioch. So Barnabas goes there and saw that the church was real, and then he began to teach them and encourage them and brought Paul to teach them for a year. So we talked about Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 9, or 10, or and 11, but we're back into Acts chapter 2. Why? Because it's significant of today. Today is a Pentecostal, Pentecost, which means that 50 days, 50 days after Jesus was resurrected, so 50 days after that, seven days, times seven weeks equals 49, which is a Saturday, and today is a Sunday, so that makes it 50 days. So today is the day of Pentecost. It was a Jewish celebration time. What is Pentecost? It was a time when people gathered to, to have this wonderful festival. It was sort of like uh, uh, Thanksgiving, where they brought their fruits and their first fruits, and then they dedicate, and they brought it to offering, and their celebration, there's markets, and they're selling. So all from the all different regions, people will come, and many people will gather in Jerusalem to celebrate this Pentecost. And it was that day that God has done incredible work. And we'll talk about that. But before we do that, I want you to understand something. Uh, what we find about the first and only church on the planet Earth, uh, we read about that in Acts chapter 1. What we find, we see that there were how many people? There were 120 people that were believing in Jesus. They have seen the Lord forgive their sins and that he was resurrected. So they are the uh, believer of Jesus, and there was 120 of them. And what we find about them is that uh, they had no money, okay? They were very poor people. They didn't have it, you know, none of them were uh, wealthy, or they didn't even have a place to worship God. So they rented an upper room where they were gathered. But uh, they had no building. This first and one and only church had no buildings, and they were pretty much poor. And also, I want you to understand that they were not very educated people. Most of them were Galileans. Galilean is a small town up in north, and they, you know, they don't have a high education there. And the people who had accent, a Galilean accents, and so they were there. Uh, 120 of them were not really educated people. They were poor. They just simply had this message in their heart, and that is that Jesus died on the cross for their sin and that he was resurrected, that he will give forgiveness of sin when we believe in him, that he will give us new life. And so they just had this message, but, you know, I just want you to know that this 120 people who are very poor, who are uneducated, who just uh, don't even have their own building, is the first only Christian church that formed. And they had pretty much no influence to the world. I mean, people don't really care about what their message is. And the culture does not even allow them to speak anything about Jesus because who cares? Nobody cared about their message. And, uh, and this p church is just formed. And uh, all they could do is gather together and pray. They pray together, and, which is good. But they're just praying. They're discussing about what to do. They were uh, electing one of the uh, apostle uh, disciple because Judas has committed suicide, right? He's gone. So they added. And so it was a good organization, but nothing really was happening. They weren't doing anything among them. They weren't doing anything through them. There was nothing happening in their life. That was a church in Acts chapter 1. But something great happened in Acts chapter 2. 
And that is incredibly different from Acts chapter 1. God has, as Jesus has promised to the disciple, that they would be baptized. In a few days, they would be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus said, when you, the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witness from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the ends of the earth. That's what God, Jesus told them, and he ascended into heaven. And after he was ascended into heaven, after 40 days of spending time with people, uh, after his resurrection, so 10 more days left. But they had no idea when this was going to happen. But on that, eve, uh, on that day when they were all together, 120 of them were together, uh, something amazing happened, and that is the Holy Spirit came. And as we read, there's a three things that I want you to understand about this event. And uh, first of all, what I want you to see is that this uh, Pentecostal came, and they were all together in one place. And suddenly, verse 2 says, A sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven. So the sound of wind coming down from heaven, uh, where they were sitting, and uh, it filled the whole house. The Bible says that. Now, what does that mean? Hmm. Now, I want you to understand, in Hebrew, there's a word called wind. And it is pronounced Ruha, 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 it's, it's Ruha, and, and uh, it sounds like uh, the wind when you say it, right? Ruha, uh, that's the Hebrew word for wind, but also the Hebrew word for wind is also has triple meaning, which means that it has, you could use Ruha as a wind, but also you could use Ruha as a breath, breath, when you breathe. That breath is also Ruha, and also the spirit is also Ruha. So those three things are, could be translated in that way. So Ruha is a wind, but also it is like a breath. Breath that is really massive, that's what the wind is, right? And then if you magnify that, then it sounds like a wind. And that's what was happening. Now. When we hear the, the breath, breath uh, where do we find that in the Old Testament? Oh yeah, Old Testament, chap, uh, the Genesis, from the very beginning. When God created man, right? He gathered the dust from the ground. He formed the body. So he has a physical body kind of looking thing. But then God does something special. The Bible says he breathed his spirit into his nostril. So he breathed, Raha, Raha, and he breathed his spirit. And then the Bible said this, uh, this materialist uh, a person, just a physical person, now was given a life. It became a living being. Now, I want you to understand what happens in Acts chapter 2 is that there were church, there was a church, one and only church, that was formed. But, you know, they were just uh, doing things as usual. They were having prayer meeting. They were just doing everything but really not being effective into the world that is so dark. And uh, there was no room for them to, to hear their message. And this was the only church. And God breathed His Spirit on them. And that it became a, a living being, living church. God breathed His Spirit on the church. There was another time that uh, this breath is described, and that is in, in the New Testament, where Jesus, after He was resurrected, when the disciples were in the room, locked room, Jesus comes in, and then here's what Jesus did. In John chapter 20, verse 22 says, Jesus breathed on them, and He says, receive the Holy Spirit. So we know something about breath or the sound of a wind. What that meant was that from heaven, the God breathed it to this church to have life, just as Adam was given a life after God breathed His Spirit on him. 
He became a living being. So that's one thing. Sound of, sound of way, uh, the wind was filled the whole place. The second thing that happened, the Bible tells us that there was a, a divided tongue, like a fire, like a fire landed on each and every one of them. The, the tongues of fire separated it, and then it just kind of landed on everyone that was in the room. So this was like an like a amazing scene, right? The fire on people's head. It's like, hi, 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 look what you got on your head. What about you? It's like, oh, I see. So every one of them had this tongue of fire that was on, on them. Now, what do we find in the Old Testament about the fire? Moses, that's right. Moses, you remember that he was going to be the prince of Egypt, but he commits a, the murder. So what happens? He flee and then he goes to Midian uh, and marries a Midianite. And then he lives there with uh, comfortably, not thinking about anything, just kind of forgetting about his past, just living there in, uh, with the Midianites. So that was him. And after certain periods of time, uh, God began to call him. And how does he call him? Well, Moses sees this interesting sight where he sees the bush, but then there was a fire, but then the bush was not burning up. And he saw this interesting place, and it was drawn to it, and then he heard the voice, Moses, take off your sandals, because where you're standing is a holy ground, where he has to take off his shoes is a holy place. Now, I want you to know that site, there was a fire, and there was a bush, but it was not burning up the, the bush. What does that mean? This fire is self-sustained. It does not need a fuel. If you need more fire to continue to go on, you need to add more woods or put them fuel, right? But this fire does not need anything else. It is self-sustained. It burns without any resource that is necessary. It continues to burn, but not burn up the, the bush. Now, that tongues of fire was landed on every believer this fire that was burning, what was that symbolized? Well, it, it shows that, that God was with them. The presence of God was with them. The Holy God is now with them with the tongues of fire on their head. Now, I want you to understand that these people are supposed to go out into the world and change the world. And uh, uh, in their common thinking, what they're thinking about is like, okay, well, I, I just kind of like just came to know the Lord, so I, I don't really know that much. And it's those guys who spend time with Jesus. They heard the, the things from Jesus. They're the one God is going to use. And we would think that an apostle will get the big flames of fire and others may get it, may not get it. But the Bible tells us each and every one of them, each and every one of them got the fire. The, the tongues of fire on them. Now, what does that mean? That means that God is going to do something different. In the past, God was using certain men to, 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 to lead the people and, and change the world, but it is going to be different that people, every one of them, every believer will be given this, this Holy Spirit that they would be anointed by God to do great work. It does not matter who you are or what age or, or how much you know about the Bible. It's about those who come and God has given the Holy Spirit to each and every one of them to make, an, make, make a great effect in the world, to make a difference in the world that God is going to use every one of them. So we see this happening Tongues of fire that was land on each, each one of them. The presence of God was with them, and not just few, but every one of them, those who believe in Jesus. Now, lastly, what we find is, is this 
speaking in tongue. They were able to, to utter the words and they would speak in different languages. Now the tongue here is about the language. It's not like, you know, that we hear often at, at prayer time at our church, but I, I, I'm telling you this tongue is not just the, the la 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 la. It's going to be a language, a known language by other people as we see. And verse four, te uh, 4 tells us that all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongue, other language as the Spirit enabled them. Now this, this speaking in tongue was incredible. Now these people are not like, uh, the, they didn't learn other language. It was just Spirit giving them to utter the word and people would understand. I will be speaking to, I don't know, to Chinese and, and I would say something and, then, and they would understand exactly what I'm saying, that I'm able to speak the language that I never learned. And so this is an amazing event that was taking place. And this was huge because people from all around be, came to celebrate this Pentecost. And there were people uh, who spoke different language and different culture. They all came to celebrate this, uh, the, the Pen Pentecost. And, and they, were, they were all together for this celebration. And they were able to speak and people were to understand. Now, where do we find that in the Old Testament? That's right. We find in chapter 11 of Genesis where people was just greatly in number. There's so many people and people wanted to stay together and they wanted to become like God. And so they decide together with their technology. Their technology was building a brick. But their technology, they said, let us build a, a huge city. And then they got, gathered together and they began to build city, the huge city that it would reach up to, to heavens. And that was like challenging God. Hey, God, we could be like you. Hello. And we, wanna, we could be just as same powerful as you. And they challenged God and they began to build their city. So what did God do? God saw their pride. God saw their arrogance. So God allowed their, their they confused their language. Everybody began to speak in another language. Can you imagine? You go to school and you sit down and your teacher said, Bobby, da, ba, do, ba, ba, ba. And it's like, what? Gibberish. What are you saying? And so you tell your friends, hey, what is she talking about? What? Everybody's going nuts. You cannot communicate. You cannot really go. So that's what happened. The, when they were building this Tower of Babel, they were speaking to each other, but they could not understand what they're saying because they all spoke in different language. And so those who, people who spoke similar language and they could understand, they began to go east. Those people who spoke the, the same language, they went to west and north and south, and they began to scatter and they form a nation. Now, so that event that took place in Genesis chapter 11 is to scatter people to separate. But here, something unique is t the opposite. When they spoke the language of the people, when they shared the gospel to them, when they were all gathered for this festival, they understood what they are saying. They were so amazed. People were going, excuse me, aren't those Galileans? They don't have education. They would not learn those languages. But how is it that they speak the language perfectly where I could understand? And so God gave them uh, uh, the, the language gift of tongue, where it's a different language. They were able to speak and people began to understand about Jesus Christ. Oh, now the Holy Spirit came and the gift of the Holy Spirit came and they received the power and then we could see Peter standing up among them and began to preach the wonderful gospel. And everyone who heard it understood. And they said, what shall we do? And it says, repent and be baptized. And that's exactly what happened. And that day, 
3,000 people were baptized and, and they received the Lord. 3,000 people in just one message, people were gathered. And not only that, something amazing was happening. Towards the end of chapter 2 of the book of Acts, what you find is that these people were just amazingly just joyful. They gathered together to, to worship and pray, but they devote themselves to the apostles' teaching, and then they shared everything. Their life was so different. It was so powerful that they, uh, they sold their possession to help others, those who are in need, and they were sharing everything. And they come together, eat together, uh, pray together, and they were just joyful uh, people. They met every day, and the Lord added number to uh, added more people to their number. So this was amazing. So Acts chapter two, the church was just exciting and powerful. Acts chapter one, basically just people, 120 people. They were just kind of walking around, maybe gathering for prayer, which is great, but they weren't really doing anything. They couldn't do anything. They were not affecting the world. But here, when the Holy Spirit came, they were a completely different church. This is what God wants for each and every one of us and for our church. We could be a Christian that prays, that could go to church and that gives offering uh, and, and still be a church, right? But there's difference when the Holy Spirit comes upon the people. When they're filled by the Holy Spirit, their life is not the same. It is completely different. It's in power. Uh, and so that's what we see. Acts chapter 1, church. And then Acts chapter 2, church. It's just complete. It's the same church, same people. But they were completely changed because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And God is able to do that in your life. So what we need to do is ask God, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Continue to ask, I want to be powerful in your name. I want to live a life that is filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to live in your power as we seek that God pour out His Spirit upon you and you will never be the same. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We see a, a complete difference from Acts chapter 1, the church that was, that was poor and uh, not influential, didn't do anything in the world, church that is ineffective. And then we see church in chapter 2, where they receive your uh, spirit, you breathe on them. And that, Lord, that they would receive that fire, your presence. And that, that they were able to enable to speak the different tongues and languages. Lord, we see a complete different transformation. I pray for the same for our church, for our people, that we would seek to be filled by your Holy Spirit, that we would be able to be effective in our sharing and, and our life. Lord, may we be filled by your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen.